Thank you. Roadhouse this morning, and that felt good. He did the same thing at Leaf a few years ago to our barn. Just as Churgilchin from the Tuvan People's Republic, anybody ever heard of it? I hadn't until we brought it. They had, great, had turned the barn into an ancient shrine with haunting throat singing. So I don't have any music talent yet. And let's see, it was probably my best music history was camp songs. In 1995, I'd only been to two or three festivals, and I accidentally came upon a series of strange coincidences and happenings and ended up very innocently starting a festival, Leaf, just right up the road, best known for our two festivals a year, Lake Eden Arts Festival. And then over the years, we've grown to become an arts and education program as well with Leaf and Schools and Streets locally and Leaf International globally. So LEAF has really been a gift to me that's allowed me to be surrounded by people from Mac to Tergilchen. Today I'm here to talk about living your life as a festival, that energy that we just felt in here. How do we get that into our daily lives? My passion had been cultural traditions. And when I started LEAF, I wanted to start something that would entice people to come by a few names they might know, from the Indigo Girls to Taj Mahal. But when they got there, the magic would really happen in discovering what they had not seen or heard of before. Many of us in here may not want to or be able to, for whatever reason, travel to places like Haiti, Rwanda, Ethiopia, India, Mongolia. But through the music and the arts, we can take you there. And it's just this little bit of connections that when you're living your life as a festival, and I have to go back to say, I'm not talking about living life as a party. I'm talking about what it means to me, which is breaking through those cultural and community boundaries in innovative ways. And we just happen to do it through music and arts. My husband, who I met at LEAF, said something very pivotal to me early on. He said, if you live in Mali, bluegrass is world music. And it reminded me not to just look out beyond, but also to look at what's in our own backyard and that that also is world music. So I'd been running the festival for 12 years, 24 festivals, that's a lot of festivals, and I realized that I had pretty much been doing all the logistics. I'd been parking, emergencies, bad teenagers at 3 a.m., and that I really had not lived the festival. So one night, a fellow staffer and I decided, we're gonna live what we're working here. So we intentionally set out to go live the festival. We started in Elf Haven childcare by the fire with bedtime stories. Then we went on to hear poets slamming, walked up the mountain to a drum circle, came back to a fire theater performance. We danced, we ate, we shopped. And then we traipsed through the campgrounds of all these little magical moments and family traditions. And we actually sat down and had some conversations by the campfire. And we ended the evening with a Brazilian dance party in the barn. So it was a good night. It was a really transformational night for me. All of a sudden, I realized I had taken the time to step out of all of those logistics and to step into the moments and realize why people come back year after year and what those traditions mean. And that I really felt like I had gone on a cross-country journey. So I decided that evening that I was going to start living the work that I was doing as well as bringing it into my daily life. So the festival was going good, but something felt like it was missing. And I have a group of godchildren who all live in public housing, and they were the catalyst for this feeling. They were growing up, and they had so little arts access or enrichment happening, and they were going wild and in their own different ways. And they'd come over to my house, and they'd have this crazy energy, and then all of a sudden they'd go, they'd get on a drum or get on a guitar, and that craziness would be funneled into something that was wondrous. So Leaf in Schools and Streets became the vision. Taking artists like Mac Arnold and putting them into the communities and sending them into the public housing communities on a week weekly basis, having them not only enrich and empower the kids, but give them skills and confidence to stand up on stages like this and perform. And not only 
did we want them to have that experience? We wanted them to become performers alongside their mentoring artist. My group of guide kids, or at least one of them, they ended up naming themselves the Klondike Coyotes. And they've gone from their neighborhood to a stage, both at Leaf and then in our larger community. And something else happens in this process, which we didn't really expect at first. And that's the audience seeing these kids that literally might live right around the corner from them, but they've never driven into those neighborhoods. They've never even sat down on porches and talked to the grandmas. And then the parents and the family of the kids coming to Leaf, coming to a place that they thought might not be a place for them. And being there and not only having their kids be the shining stars, but also at the same time being exposed to other cultures and other arts. Just as the Klondike kids have gone from that moment of going from the neighborhood to the stage, our Leaf International Rwanda kids have gone from being street orphans to being world-class performers. When I ended up in Rwanda a couple of years ago, I thought I was going to work in an orphanage and we had a very simple music program that was going to connect the kids to their local traditions. It sounded very all planned and easy, lovely trip. And what I ended up finding was a group of 25 street orphans that had raised themselves since the genocide as a band of brothers in an uncovered parking lot. And what we had to bring them was Rwandan music and arts. Well, fast forward now, six, seven years, and these boys have now grown into men. In the past year, several of them have gotten jobs. The middle one drumming here, Patrick, Last year, he was invited to join the National Ballet of Rwanda, which is the premier touring troupe of the country. Daniel, on the end here, he is now the foremost Inanga player in the country, which is a Rwandan traditional instrument. We've had him in a home for a few years, and having that daily and weekly mentor in their lives made all that transformation possible, and they've come a long way. So Leaf International happened very organically. As I said, my passion was cultural traditions. I was on a little island called Bekwe in the Grenadines. After a couple of days, I was bored with vacationing. And I walked down to the local school and asked the principal there, I said, so how many kids on this island are learning the local tradition of steel pan? She said, one, the governor's daughter. Hmm. So if I was willing to raise the funds and get steel pans here at the school and find a local teaching artist, would you be willing to host a program? Oh, of course. Steel pans, by the way, are a whole nother beast that I learned a lot about. So now over 100 kids on the island know how to play steel pan. And their teaching artist, Elvis, who was a street musician playing for pennies and change, is now one of the most revered mentors on the island. Hope, who's pictured here dancing in Leaf International, Tanzania, he's 17 years old and he dreams of becoming a heart doctor. He said to me after two years of being in the program, he said, I now know my traditions. When I was young, I would see my grandpa and the elders dancing in the fields and dancing in the villages. I now understand. I am so proud to be Tanzanian. The dress that I'm wearing this evening was made in honor of our Leaf International Mexico program by a local Asheville artist, Brooke Pretty. So it brings us back to our neighborhood, which is always good to come back to your neighborhood. Mr. Green here, who's pictured in his laundry mat, had seen what was happening in the newly revitalized River Arts District. And he walked into a friend of mine's studio and said, I see what's happening here, and I've been left behind. My friend told me about it, and so I called up Mr. Green and said, I'd like to have breakfast with you. Within that first hour of meeting Mr. Green, I learned more about the African-American history of Asheville than I had known my entire life. He really was the keeper of that tradition. He felt left out, so we came up with a plan that we would create a Leaf in Schools and Streets program up at his alma mater, Stevens Lee, where the kids would learn how to lay down tracks. And then we would bring it back to a community event where we invited people from all the hipster communities as well as the local communities. And we had a great showing of so many different kinds of people. 
And all day we stayed there at the laundromat and the convenience store. Kids laid tracks, adults and families laid tracks, and then it culminated in a laundry session at the end. Even Mr. Green's girlfriend, Laverne, she sang about him cooking chicken for the past 30, 40 years there on T Depot Street and of helping raise the kids there. Mr. Green was born on Depot Street. Two weeks later after this, Mr. Green died on Depot Street. It was a really good reminder of do those connections now. Who are the Mr. Greens that are right outside your business or right outside your community? One thing about living life as a festival that I've learned is don't fly it alone. I've tried that, it doesn't work well. <laughs> I'm so grateful to be surrounded by an amazing team of people. And it's really that team that helps bring all those visions and dreams to life, to connect, to collaborate. There's a small orphanage in Panama, and it's fenced in by a huge chain link fence. And it was one of the saddest places that I'd ever been to when we first stepped in. Leaf International Music Camp brings those kids to life and empowers them, gives them skills. And nine of those children and three of their local teaching artists got on a plane for the first time ever and came up to Asheville. And it was really wrapping those three parts of what we've been creating together. So they came and they did exchanges with Leaf and Schools and Streets kids. And then by the end of the day, or the end of the week actually, they had become leaf performing artists. That crossing of cultures, that crossing of generations, that crossing of ages, the whole places where we cross and cross and cross again and make those connections happen. So in living life like a festival, it's great to pick out those juicy parts, whether it's the dancing, the music, the poetry, whatever it is that kind of gives that juice to your daily life. And it's still a work in progress for me. Every month I'm trying to add another piece. How do I integrate that into my life? And really, what living life like a festival can do, regardless of what your business is or your passion, whether it's couch surfing or corporate, that it will awaken you to the excitement of possibilities to step beyond whatever your culture is, whatever your community is, and make innovative connections. Thank you.